Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to Pro Cycling Manager 2022. This is the first tutorial of the year that we're going to do, and we are covering in this one the revamped, redesigned stamina and resistance system. Let's get straight into it with a few facts, and then I will show you the experiments, or the latest experiment that I've been running to clarify some further details. Uh, first thing, stamina, resistance, and recovery okay, is a dependent system that has a lot of overlap amongst it. And ultimately, it do has to do with three things that you see here. One is your green bar, which is the bottom bar at uh, for each rider. And then you have your yellow bar and your red bar. Now, traditionally, recovery is going to largely impact your green bar, but it's also going to depend on your stamina. And then your stamina will largely impact your yellow bar, though traditionally was affected by resistance, while resistance is entirely the one that uses the red bar underneath. Essentially, you have long-term health, of your rider you have your day's long-term effort available to your rider and then you have your short-term sprint max effort now breaking that down a little bit further on what we know in the new system is that regardless of the rider regardless of the rider's attributes early on in a stage they all behave in an identical manner when it comes to stamina resistance regardless of the attributes that is fact it is tested it's been verified by multiple sources including myself through testing so noah granigan with a 62 stamina a 66 resistance just a 59 recovery he is identical to mark hershey and a 74 76 He's identical to Dylan Grunewagen. He is identical to Peter Sagan. He is identical to, let's pick out a real standout case, Remco Evenepoel, who has roughly an 80 between the two. That is fact. They will behave exactly the same. If I controlled Remco Evenepoel and had him attack, if I then also attacked at the same time with Noah Granigan, they are going to consume the red bar very quickly if he has clear road ahead of him, which he doesn't right now, so he's going to struggle to get through. And it will drain some of his longer term effort, but he will recover fully. If we can do something brief with this. You can see we have been able to get down on his red bar a little bit. That would continue in this clear air also impacting his yellow bar but you can also see that both the yellow bar and the red bar secondary line behind it is still maximum and here is why it's maximum even though jazz strap behind us is not maximum and that is a hundred percent down to the green bar the green bar for the first about third of consumption this is where all riders are identical in terms of how this operates, how quickly it empties, how quickly it refills. For the first third, like I said, rider to rider to rider, it is the, the same. Now, Van Moore, somebody who is out front pulling for the Peloton, is likely going to have spent more energy, which is going to lower that green bar. He can sit up. And as long as the pace of the peloton isn't bad, or if he just lets himself go out the back, he will fully recover, as will Noah Granigan. We put him on auto. You can see he's going to quickly recover that red bar. That yellow bar is likewise going to come back up. What happens is what we're going to see back here. The guy is involved in the experiment. Two things, and let me get the first one out of the way. That first third of consumption to somewhere just right of the icon here for your water bottle. Somewhere in this range is where you begin 
to now have an impact on your yellow maximum. We'll go over what those details are here shortly on how that all works out. Somewhere around a third of drainage off your green bar is where that's all impacted. For this test, I have taken outside of one or two attributes, I have made all of the rest of the riders besides Noah Granigan six guys that all have a 70 across the board. They all have a 100% fitness. They all have a zero race day condition for the consistency on offer. Jastrab, he has one variation and that is mountain at 85, which we're still some ways off, but he will hit that mountain 85 at some point. The usage of that, which by the way is only above 3% gradient. Behind him, Clark, 70 is across the board and everything, but he has an 85 downhill. I wanna test what happens regarding that one. Vetkov, 70 is across the board, 85 Beridur. As you can see, all three of them have identical usage on their green bar, identical maximum remaining because we have put them under some strain. And because they've been under some strain and riding solo as each one of them is riding individually, that strain that we have put them under has caused them to use more green bar. And now that they are under that threshold, you can see that they are beginning to lose some. And as we continue on here, it's going to get worse. And you can see how it's draining at identical rates for the three of them. Now, here's where we get into some other variation that is important to note and will impact riders as you go along. Beginning with McGill. 70s across the board in all the regular primary attributes. His stamina, resistance, and recovery are where we have variation. For him, we have gone for a minimum. Stamina is a 50, recovery is a 50, but his resistance, 85. And actually with that 100% bonus, which everybody has that same bonus, he gets a plus two. Behind him, Castillo has the 85 in stamina, giving him a plus two there, so 87 actually. And then his resistance and recovery are at 50. And then lastly, Ross, 50-50 in stamina resistance, but 85 in recovery. Now here's what we have learned about stamina resistance and recovery when it comes to your riders. First off, Ross, recovery. Recovery is green bar only. We are on a one day race. So recovery here you can see is identical. Now if we were to sit up with all these riders and slow them down to 20, he would not recover as in yellow bar, red bar, as in heart rate, he would not recover any faster than the others. What recovery does is in a stage race, day by day by day, the effort of multiple days, cumulative effort will wear on riders and you will start days with less green bar. But on the day itself, it has zero impact. On the next day, a high recovery will have more green bar day by day by day than somebody who has less recovery. So for classics, recovery means nothing. For a short three stages, recovery doesn't matter. Grand Tour, 21 stages, low recovery is going to struggle at the end of the race. They are gonna be in pretty bad shape going into the stage and then be impacted by their other attributes sooner into a race because they will fall below that threshold much sooner. Now we get into stamina versus resistance. Again, we have Vetkov and others here on a 72-72. Very balanced. You can see both have been impacted or starting to be impacted by the fact that we've dropped below that threshold. However, McGill has a varying set of attributes. He is a 50 in stamina but he has the 85 in resistance. You can see that the red bar is still maximum. It has not been impacted. His resistance, his maximum, thanks to a high resistance attribute, is going to remain much longer, which means he can do a short-term effort later in a stage, after you fall below that threshold, he can sustain an effort much longer than other riders. But you can see with a 50 stamina, his yellow bar 
is dropping significantly. It's very rapid. By the time we get towards the end of this stage, he's going to have nothing left because that yellow bar is going to go away. That red bar is going to stay. It's going to be higher without yellow bar. He won't be able to give much of an effort. But as long as he does have some yellow bar, he will give a more sustained short-term effort compared to other riders. Castillo, exact opposite. With an 85 stamina, you can see his yellow bar is still almost max. It's barely being impacted. But meanwhile, his red bar with a 50 is draining more quickly than anybody else. Ross with a 50 on both. You can see he has an identical yellow bar to McGill, who has a 50 stamina, and he has an identical red bar to Castillo, who also has a 50 in that department. Therefore, conclusion, and this will be more greatly impacted over time. Uh, the longer this stage goes on, we're not even halfway through, but it's Milan San Remo. It's very, very long. These guys are going to be impacted long term in this. Now, one other thing we're going to see short term is that Jastrab with his 85 Mountain, as soon as we get to 3%, right now these guys should be going right about the same speed. There's going to be a little variation to their speed because of where they're at in terms of flat terrain, uphill, downhill. It evens itself out. They've kept the same gap to each other. But once we get to this 3% area, you're going to see that Jastrab with an 85 Mountain rating is going to f climb faster. So let's get into that. There you go. Okay, so right now we're at roughly 5% gradient. We've got this guy in the blue and white shirt with the black sleeves next to us. So taking um, this specific spot with each of our riders, Jastrab is going 25 kilometers per hour right now. Full kilometer slower with a 70 mountain. And you see how everybody else, as they come on, they're going to be at that same 24 kilometers per hour. So you can see that there is a difference in speed, even though it's just a low overall climb. The steeper it gets, the greater the impact, and Jastrab's going to be faster than all of these guys as you go over the top. He'll have opened the gap quite a bit. You can see he's now got a good 40 seconds over the chasers. In fact, these push that out to about 50 seconds as Clark enters the tunnel. Everybody else, their gap stays the same. Mountain rating, everything to do. And that is despite no energy. If they had energy on that climb, you better believe he would have opened that gap up quite a bit more. But he still managed to be faster than everybody else, even though they were all completely drained. And he opened up a pretty healthy gap of about 40 seconds on that climb even though a lot of it falls below that three percent which means it was flat raining meaning he wasn't gaining anything during that time here's what i want to test now clark is our guy with 85 downhill and we are about to have a sharp decline now i know he's going to have a faster speed or at least i assume he's going to have a faster speed and we're going to test first the speed but i also want to test if there's any difference in recovery for him versus Jastrab or Vetkov. And Jastrab is going to fill that red bar right here, right now, 40 kilometers an hour, and we are next to this guardrail. Let's see what happens with Clark. When does he get full on his red bar? Same spot. He is going 42 kilometers an hour. In fact, I think he actually is slightly closer. Uh, I, I do believe he's about a bike length and a half further down than Jastrab was. If we check Vetkov, I think we'll see the same thing as we fill this red bar. It's about the same time. It is about the same time, but the speed is definitely different. Again, McGill in that 40, you see it picks up right as you get down there. And I think that's as they're starting to get a little bit of yellow bar, these guys are going a little bit faster. Here's that comparison once again. Jastrab, Clark, Vetkov. The stamina resistance part, identical. Despite the climb, Despite the descent, the difference with Jastrab Clark versus Vetkov, all three of them, stamina resistance wise, remain exactly the same as they were giving same effort. Gaps have opened up a bit between them. Jastrab opening a little bit of a gap on the climb. Clark closing that gap a little bit on the descent and also opening it up behind Vetkov. 
So you can see that they both have a speed advantage. All three have maintained 85 as an effort level continually through this process, and therefore the energy consumption and recovery has been identical for the three. Here is something a little different. McGill, yellow bar is not the same, but the red bar, you can see that he's fully recovered that red bar just slightly after these other guys, even though he has quite a bit more recovery to do. Castillo, quite a bit less, right? 50 on the resistance, smaller red bar. But look, look where he's gonna fill up. He just filled up the red bar right here. Very important detail. He has recovered his red bar in the exact same spot as Jastrab, Clark, and Vetkov. He has less overall red bar compared to those guys, but he has recovered it at the exact same rate. Meaning your max, wherever it's located, when you recover, you're going to recover it over X number of seconds, we'll say. And X number of seconds is the same regardless of what your max is. So if you have 10% max remaining, X number of seconds are gonna go by to recover that 10% of your red bar. If you have 80% red bar remaining, that same X number of seconds are going to elapse for it to recover. Now McGill oddly did take a few meters more <laughs> compared to the others to get up to his with his 85. So I'm curious if that has something to do with some sort of threshold on that one as well. Maybe that threshold is the same, say 67%, you know, somewhere right around here. They all hit this exactly the same or up to about here, right? Somewhere around that same threshold as the green bar one. And from there, it'll then recover at a similar rate across the board. I, I don't know if the system's that complicated or McGill was just a slight outlier, but here is Ross. Let's confirm this. Yeah, you can see he's just a little bit later. Just a little bit later on when he hit versus Castillo. But where he's hitting is the same spot as McGill. Who actually still hasn't hit, but that's because he's he's using some. I think he is yeah, his heart rate's a little bit higher. He's able to push because he has more red bar. Because they're giving 85 effort. If we were going 20 and not providing effort, I think it would have been the same. I think what we saw with McGill and why it was a fraction of a second later compared to everybody else, like Ross, has something to do with the fact that uh, he was able to give some sort of effort because of the speed that we're going. But anyway, big point here, recovery of your red bar is dependent on what your max remaining is and the x number of seconds that it's going to take to recover is going to be the same across the board so if you have less remaining than somebody else you and them are going to recover your bed bar at the same rate it's going to take you the same amount of time to recover as it's going to take them but they're going to have whatever their total max left and you're going to have your max left but you're going to achieve it in the same amount of time hopefully that makes sense but one big key here is you can see that castillo with higher stamina at this stage versus mcgill who has a 50 ross who has a 50 castillo who has an 85 in stamina you can see a huge difference in their yellow bar and we're going to see that turn into something pretty significant before long. Let's go ahead and let them finish their descent. Let's keep up the same momentum, same tempo that everybody has right now. Because technically on the flat, they all operate at the same speed, given certain parameters. 
certain parameters that are no longer going to be capable of being met. So here is this woman right here. Okay, we are just reaching just about on the flat. Jazz trap. His recovery over the descent. Clark. Okay, his recovery over the descent. The same. Clark closed that gap. He's back to within 30 seconds. He rode down the hill faster, but stamina resistance wise, he is in identical shape compared to Jastrap. Vetkov, identical shape. At this point, Clark, Jastrab are already starting to wear it down again because they are going 85 effort on the flat. Here's McGill's problem. His yellow bar, his red bar, it's already not happening. We are just flattening out and he is already taking away his remaining effort. Look at where he's at. Yellow bar, zero. Red bar, fading very, very quick. Let's see what happens when Castillo reaches. Look where Castillo's yellow bar is. Castillo's yellow bar, he has that higher max. These guys just went downhill. They gave very little effort on the downhill. Their heart rate was low. They started to recover. He is not any better going downhill than Jastrab or Vetkov. Clark goes a little bit faster downhill. Jastrab, Clark, Vetkov all have the same amount of energy. McGill has less. Castillo has more. And here comes Ross. Same as McGill. So here's what you get from that finding. Recovery of yellow bar, just like that red bar, where it recovers over X amount of time, but it's based on a percentage of your red bar, so is the yellow bar. So that recovery, if you have less remaining energy, you are going to recover in X amount of seconds. That remaining energy. Castillo, because his max is significantly higher in X amount of seconds, he recovered a lot more. But because McGill and Ross had less remaining maximum yellow bar, their recovery was quite minimal. So minimal, even though it was at the same rate as everybody else, but the recovery was so minimal that the moment we went flat, their energy ran out again. So here is your finding. Stamina massively important once you go over a certain distance certain distance being the effort required to to go over and get to that green bar being underneath short stage not going to be an issue everybody's going to keep a high max so you can get away with low stamina you can get away with low resistance classics recovery doesn't matter at all short stage race doesn't matter long stage race matters a lot so recovery you need it for Grand Tours. You need it for our seven or eight stage race. You don't really need it for anything else. Stamina. You need it on a long stage or a stage where the Peloton, a Peloton that is pushing hard, giving out large amounts of effort, is going to drain that green, green bar faster. So if you have riders with really good stamina, make the race hard. It will impact other riders. The rider with really good stamina could be around late. Make sure they have either good flat if it's a flat race. Make sure they have good mountain if it's a climbing race to go along with that high stamina. Resistance? Well, resistance is going to be really good for that last ditch effort or getting clear of the group because you can already see somebody like McGill with low stamina. Well, he can't even give the effort. These guys can. I could sprint them right now. They'd have something left. Now, if you were to slow everybody down, allow them to recover and get back what energy they have, you're going to once again see Jastrab, Clark, Vetkov locked in, same tempo, everything's the same outside of these short little climbs that we're hitting, where Jastrab's going to be a little bit faster, where on the descent, the other side of the hill, Clark's going to be a little bit faster. Vetkov, as far as I could tell with the bare door, now in the past, my assumption was that bare door only impacts how likely the AI rider is to attack. 
somebody with an 85 is going to try to leave the peloton behind, especially early in a stage or even later in a stage. They're going to try to leave the peloton and act on their own. However, among the community, there is a belief that Baradora rating, a high Baradora rating, is going to increase the likelihood of getting that blinking red when you attack, as in that sustained effort, as in that resistance piece is going to last longer. Could be the case. I have not confirmed that one in my tests because there's a percentage, because it's not a guarantee. I'd have to get a pretty large sample size to actually test if that's the case, but we can play off the assumption that that is probably true. However, you can see from here that Fetkov has gained absolutely nothing, nothing at all uh, from that Baradour rating on anybody else. But we can definitely see low stamina, ouch, on a long stage like Milano San Remo. High stamina, even though he's got terrible resistance and he cannot sprint, if we allow these guys to recover and then turn things up again, before long, Castillo would be racing by himself compared to everybody else. That bonus stamina, massive bonus. McGill, Ross, huge trouble. And Ross with 85 recovery, because it's a classic, gains absolutely nothing and finds himself actually in worse shape than even McGill, because M McGill at least has that sprint capability <laughs> that Ross doesn't have. But ultimately, without stamina, McGill is pretty much just as bad off as Ross is because a sprint isn't going to matter once that yellow bar is gone. The last thing is I want to see once that max yellow is gone, will McGill fade away uh, on his max red bar? Okay, there's a minimum. There's a minimum on the yellow, which means that red is not impacted. So that part's confirmed. I would imagine we're going to get a minimum on Castillo. Interesting thing, McGill, Ross, that yellow's totally gone, but that red isn't. So it does seem to drain at a different rate than your yellow bar. Meanwhile, you can see that Granigan, with the green bar as high as it is, has not broken into that category where he is going to suffer because he is still above that threshold. So he still has maximum from sitting on throughout the day. He is close to that threshold where he's going to start to lose that maximum. Granigan, with low 60s, 62 stamina, 66 resistance, still has everything left. 59 recovery. He's slower on the flat. He doesn't climb as well. His attributes outside of the Barador are lower than everybody else's base 70, yet is doing just fine because he has not provided the effort because his green bar is higher. Goes back and confirms what we talked about earlier regarding that. Stamina seems to matter the most in terms of still being around late in a race. Resistance is going to give you that opportunity to make that sustained effort. So that sprint at the end, having that left. But in a short race, everybody's the same. It's going to come down to your base attributes. So in a short, easy race where you didn't have to provide much effort, if you have 50 stamina and 50 resistance or 62, 66, like Noah Granigan, if he had 85 sprint, 85 acceleration, he could absolutely win this thing, despite having no stamina or resistance. But it's going to come down to how much effort did he have to put in. Protect those riders as long as you can. Minimize that effort that they have to provide. And then it's going to come down to the pure attribute versus attribute, main primary attributes, head to head. Lowering the effort down to 20, let's confirm a few simple things and you can see how f how much faster Castillo is recovering right now compared to everybody else. Jastrap, Clark, Vetkov with a 70 recovering at the same rate that Castillo is. These guys should all have a max yellow bar at roughly the same point. McGill, Ross, no difference, no gain, no variation between them. And meanwhile, Noah Granigan still in the peloton doing just fine. Okay, Castillo almost full. Jastrab, Clark, Vetkov, almost full. McGill, Ross, it's too small to see, but they do have that red bar. All right, folks, hopefully this was enlightening for you. And of course, if we then turn around and make some sort of effort for these guys, even if it's just a moderate effort, let, let's put them at say 75. Even at a moderate effort, you're gonna see heart rate wise, McGill, Ross, they just had nothing left and they're already out 
and they're going slow. You can see McGill is losing Castillo. Castillo, Betkov, Clark, they all ride on. They're all at identical speeds, 45. You got to make it same area here. Same spot, each time, each rider, same speed. Castillo has a lot more yellow bar than these guys. He has no red bar to speak of, but he is doing the same speed that they are. McGill, Ross are not. Reason why? They're out of energy. They have expended it. They have nothing left to do. Now these guys are all getting themselves water. But we're about to see Jastram, Clark, and Vetkov. They are now out of energy with their 70. And you're going to see Castillo, even though he has no red bar, you're going to see him going faster. And look, he is making up ground. He is passing this group up. Same effort. Green bars, identical for everybody. Actually, Castillo is now. Oh, there's an interesting thing. Okay, McGill and Ross have identical green bars. Castillo has less. Vetkov has somewhere in between. You see that? So does Clark. And that is from the effort. They ran out of energy. McGill and Ross first ran out of energy therefore stopped providing much effort. They backed off. Heart rate dropped to 140 automatically. They bonked out. Castillo has sustained a higher effort level, but now that Vetkov, Clark, and Istra, uh, Jastrap bonked out and are giving less effort, they, their green bar, sticking around a little bit longer. But Castillo, even though he's given a 75, still has that yellow bar, is clearly going faster than the other guys are. He's leaving them behind slowly but surely. And his green bar draining a little faster. Okay, that confirms a lot, folks. That does confirm a lot. All right, folks, ho hopefully that helps everyone understand the new system and its limitations, its advantages, its gains. Ultimately, I would rate stamina as the most important unless you are a Grand Tour rider, a stage racer who is looking to win the Tour de France, in which case you certainly want to add in some recovery as well. Resistance, secondary. Castillo is doing a lot more than the, what, what the rest of these guys have been able to do because he can recover quite quickly. If he wants to win, he's going to need some resistance with it, and that's going to be the difference maker at the finish line. Others can attack. He can't, but he can sustain an effort and leave a lot of guys behind. Jastrab, who uh, climbed like crazy. Of course, we've changed circumstances now, haven't we? Just right here at the end. But whatever you put in, Granigan, conserving. You could now see, there you go. He has fallen below the threshold. He's past that point just right of the, the water bottle icon. And now he, like the others, fallen off. But he's waited till now to do it. If we sit him up, he'll recover, but only to there. All right, folks. That's going to do it for this review tutorial of what goes on with the stamina resistance, how that all works, how that's impacted, what matters. Obviously, the higher those attributes are for you, the better, but they are impact specific things in specific ways. And through that first third, all riders are equal. But once you get below that threshold, it's going to start to have an impact. So the longer the race goes on, the more it matters. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.